Welcome, everyone. Hello. Today, I am here with my friend and also copywriter, Greg Blake, who is a badass copywriter for coaches and entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome. Hey, what's going on? Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm glad to be here. Of course. So you are a copywriter, which you're my first copywriter on here. And I'm super excited for that because you're actually, that's how we connected. You're my copywriter. He does all of my website copy and the site emails as well. So let's talk copywriting and marketing. <laughs> Let me tell me a little bit how an entrepreneur should go about copywriting when they're first starting out their copy journey. Because me, I was writing my own copy for a very long time and I absolutely hated it. That's why I outsourced it. However, I know that's not feasible for a lot of entrepreneurs. They don't have a team yet or they can't afford a team or they just can't. It's just not possible for them to do that. So if they want to go into writing their own copy, let's chat a little bit about how they should go about doing that. Is there any kind of uh, formatting that you do, any kind of a flow, any kinds of tricks that you have right off the bat? There's, there's actually like a ton of things you could do. Um, usually the best place I'd, I'd tell people to start, anybody that I'm teaching, even starting at, you know, new copywriters, is you want to try to take everything the same way you would a conversation. Um, so when you write it, you want to follow it, you know, like, uh, tie all your ends together the same way you would a conversation and just give it that same flow. But, um, pretty much what you, what you kind of want to do is follow a pattern. Um, basically what you do is introduce a problem, you know, kind of give them a little bit of more info, uh, show them where they're at or a little bit worse than where they're at, which, um, it's kind of like, uh, like poking his sore wound or something, you know, and then you start to bring them and introduce them to the solution. Um, right after the solution, you, you know, right around the solution anyways, you introduce who you are so they know who you are. It starts to build the trust because nobody will buy anything from anyone they don't trust. And then you go into the, you know, the offer, what they get, the guarantee. Um, as long as you follow a pattern along that, that's, that's actually a pretty good way to do it. Uh, I think the simplest way I ever saw it put was, um, the way Russell Brunson did for anybody just starting out. And this works for videos and all kinds of stuff. It's basically what it is, why I care, who are you, and how can I get it? And he calls it the four, four W's. Um, that's actually probably the most simple flow you can take for copy. I like that. That does sound really simple. <laughs> Usually, like, we get so overwhelmed as trying to be, trying to figure out a story, trying to figure out, like, what should we write about? And being in this overwhelm of content, it's like, we have so much to say, but how do we say it in a beautiful way that comes off flowing well, that gives you that know, like, and trust? Mm -hmm. Because that's something that we teach often in marketing as well. Someone has to know you, like you, and trust you in order for to, to buy from you. How does it change um, writing copy for a website? Because you do multiple things for me. How does it change writing copy for a website, doing video scripts, or doing email copies? Should that format change, or should we elaborate more in one more than the other? How would that be different? Well, really, the way they work out, they all have uh, like a different purpose and a different, um, not so much flow to them as like a different what has to be there. Like, for example, on a web page, the purpose of the page is different than the purpose of the email. So the email would have something, a, a little more of something and a little less of something else. So the way I've always looked at it is your web page needs to have enough information about whatever it's on. So let's, uh, let's look for a minute, let's say a product page, right? And on this product page, you need enough information on the main product page to explain what the products below are. You need the information on each of those products to explain what they are, what they do, what the benefit is, and why they want them. Um, but your About Me page, that one is completely and totally different, and all those rules are different because this one, the way I always try to you know, tell people to do it is as a story. You want to make it kind of like your story, not a dry bio. Give them something that, you know kind of it drags them in because of the you know the story element to it but it also gives them a chance to know who they're dealing with and create that you know oh I like this person this is my person for sure um in emails uh that's another thing that you can actually use them in tons of different ways uh you can use them as the newsletters which serve multiple purposes um 
there is the follow-up series for like a funnel or a product, in which case what your whole purpose is to move them through a little bit of a nurturing, but it's more you're, you're aimed at a product either way. And then there's also the nurture sequence, which is basically just trying to take an audience that signed up for something and we're trying to create more and more of a bond as we go. Um, the simplest of them is actually the video scripts because videos almost always have the same purpose at the end and it's you know leading to whatever product is on the page. So pretty much if you use that, that four W's, you're golden on the video. Um, now there, there's other tactics that I use when I write because uh, one of the things that I like to do, I like to kind of storyboard out my copy for myself. And like, if I do a sales page, there's, I run the whole thing out on idea and then I start to write it. Um, same thing with emails. Emails are one of the areas that a lot of people seek me out and hire me for because I've, there's like, I, I guess I have a touch to it is what I'm told anyways, that when it comes yeah, down to emails, do. my open rates. <laughs> That's always awesome to hear, <laughs> but, uh, my open rates are high, click through rates are high and sales always, you know, skyrocket. Um, but I, I use, I've been studying it for so long. I've learned so many email sequences, so many tricks, tactics, and it's, it's just ridiculous. The stuff you can pick up. Yeah, that is awesome. And I think it's really nice to have that, this, that connection between like what it is that you want to sell and then what kind of story can you put behind it? Let's talk a little bit about stories because I've been integrating stories a lot into my social posts lately, just in order to grab the audience attentions because no one wants a dry sell, 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 sell anymore. We live in the 2020s. We need to make that emotional connection with people nowadays, especially when we're posting on social media all the time and just within our emails, we need that interaction nowadays that has that emotional grab, sort of, sort of say, how would someone go about creating, crafting a story? They're like, I don't, I have so many things. I don't know. I only have one story. How do I keep, do I have to say the same story all over again? How would they go about writing, bringing more stories into their content? Well, if you're bringing stories in, there's a few different ways to do it, depending on where you're working it in at. Right. Story itself is just like it's it's massive. It's so powerful because people feel like they're they're not being sold to, they're not being pitched, they're not being educated, they're just being entertained. And they don't think about where it's gonna go to, whereas just like a dry ad, you know, you know, from the opening line, this guy wants to sell me something. And stories remove that element completely. Um they're also like if you look back their history, like the caveman days and all that, that was how we learned, you know. It, the story got spread throughout a community of, hey, you know, Joe Blow up the street got ate by this giant green thing that walks on two legs. Well, now every time we see the giant green thing on two legs, we all run. And, um, you know, that that's kind of, story's just, it's part of who we are. It's like the fabric of human beings. Um, one of the things that I've done um, for not just myself, but for, you know, newer copywriters and clients who've asked for it, I've actually put together a story framework. Um, you can find all kinds of different arcs online if you look, but this one's a pretty straightforward, easy to use. Um, it makes it where like you literally answer six questions and at the end of it, you have a story. But I mean, to follow it outside of that, all you really need is an idea where you're going. And, you know, if like, let's say the end of the post, you want them to just like the post. Well, then the end, the action you want is a laughter or a little bit of laughter or a smile. So, you know. You would start with that in mind and start at the beginning of the story and work to the laughter, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So what if someone is like, I've only, I only have one story. I was a corporate worker. Now I'm an entrepreneur. That is my only story. And they don't have an idea of how should they rewrite that same story in every single post? What if they run out of ideas of writing that story or different ways of formulating that stories? How would you teach someone to expand that story and bring more attention to it and bring more verbiage to it and bring more kind of flow into it where you're not exactly saying the same thing over and over and over again. And then you're just burned out with that story. So you could add more excitement into just one story. If someone only has one story. Right. On. Uh, it story is like, it, it's something it's like everywhere you look. Right. Um, so even when you feel you only have the one story, even if it's just straight boring and you've told it a hundred times, there's always something you've missed on top of which 
everyone that you've told that story to or interacted with has a story that is somewhat similar and you can actually work elements of theirs, you know, kind of jump stories, share their story as well. Um, I know for a lot of my clients, I've used testimonials and we've turned those into the stories that they share. Um, we've used stories of, you know, their backstory, which the craziest thing about a backstory is when you tell it yourself, you don't understand what what's there and what you've got. And literally like it's, you know, I had a job, it sucked, I hated it, I got out and here I am. And the thing is in that story, there's stuff that happened between each one of those little bullet points. So now we've got like eight stories. And if you look at the perspective on it, you know, your perspective of right then back when you lived the story, perspective of now that you're out of the story, you'll find, usually you'll find like three or four more stories in there that, you know, details you skip that it's like, oh, wow, that that's actually powerful. Um, it's just, it, it kind of takes a perspective change, which is one of the reasons why so many people hire, you know, copywriters and other writers is because like, uh, I'll give you an example of it. I have a uh, real estate investing coach that I work with. And one of the emails I wrote for him, I wanted to grab his backstory out. And I looked over a few of things of content he did with his backstory and when I presented it to him it's even he felt it like this whole different power to the story because it was his story but it wasn't the way he told it yeah I love that I love grabbing a different perspective and a different point of view sometimes what you need is having someone else to look over that story and they give you that different perspective I also love the idea of bringing other people's versions of that story into your story because there is going to be people that you meet along the way you have a boss or a mentor or a client whoever those people should come into your story and instead of just sticking to like oh I, my life isn't that exciting I only have one story story. No, create more interest in your story by adding those different elements and adding those different people to intrigue others and to tell your story in this beautiful, flourished way that's allowing you to tell your story fully from all different angles, all different perspectives in this beautiful light shedding. I want to talk a little bit about writer's block because I've had writer's block many times, especially when I was writing my book. Yeah. How do you navigate that? How do you work through that? Because that's what you do for a, a living you write and I can't imagine like mm -hmm. because I'm not a writer <laughs> I'm an author now though so hey um I can't hey. imagine just like <laughs> being stuck I mean I get creative blocks all the time like if I'm doing art or whatnot like there's always going to be some kind of blocks that come in your way how do you work through those I I have a few different tricks I use and they all came from the start of when I first got into copywriting sitting staring at the screen you know, pecking on one key and beating my head on the desk going, I don't know what to write. Um, there's a few things at work and every, for everybody, a couple of these will change. So they're not all going to be the same. But one of the things that I've found probably the most successful is I'll literally pick something out of the research that I did. Because um, anytime I start a project, there's a research phase. And out of this research, I pull all kinds of information. And a lot of times when writing copy, I'll just start from one of the key points in the research that I know I want to start your work in there somewhere. And I'll just start dumping words on a page and, you know, just start writing. And at some point they start to become, you know, ideas. And then you look back over the ideas and you go, oh, okay, now I'm good to go. And it just flows so much smoother afterwards. The other one in, for everybody, this will be different. It might be music. It might be videos. It might be a tv show but for me one of the things i've always been able to do is turn on um i have the gary halbert audio you know letter series um where bon halbert kevin halbert all these other a-list copywriters read the gary halbert newsletter to, to you and one of the things i've always been able to do is just kind of pop on headphones and put on one issue of that and at least you know at latest halfway through one of the issues I'm ready to write and I'm just like, all right, let's go. Come on, we can go. But um, yeah, that's it, for everybody. That step will be different. Some people, it might be music. Like uh, I've heard, I had one copywriter tell me, um, it was an A-list copywriter. He said, if ACDC is not playing, I cannot write. Um, so for everybody, it's different. But the other one that I've found, and this is another really great way um, to start is if let's say like, for example, you're sitting down to do a sales page, right? Okay, well, there's always another sales page that inspired you to buy. 
if you go to that sales page and you just pick any section off of that page and you kind of compare it to what you're doing at the time and what's there and you look at the idea and you try to follow the flow of the ideas, like just kind of pull bullet points of some of the ideas they've got, you're going to have a rough framework to start with, but you've already made, you've made progress forward. So the flow after is going to come a little easier. I really like that. And that's very similar to how I work as well. So if I'm, I have a creative block, if I'm like designing something and I just need a burst of inspiration, I'll look through a magazine and like just one word that'll stick out to you, like memorize that word, write it down and just make that story, what we were talking about based on that word. So you have that little bit of inspiration. When I was writing my book, it was music a lot. I'd put on music and I'll be writing and then I'll be like, oh crap, I don't, what am I supposed to write? And then I'll hear one sentence of a lyric and I'm like oh yes inspiration <laughs> and I'll just get so excited because then I'll be like oh there goes my creative block it's done already so you talked a little bit about having a structure when you work like there's a research period tell me more about how they should flow about when working with copy well the way that uh and most copywriters do this at least most of the good ones um the way we go is there's kind of a, you know, there's a structure to how we work. And for me, it usually starts with, um, depending on whether you're a new client, a client I've worked with in the past, or it's my own. Um, it usually starts with either a call or some communication where we go over ideas of your audience, uh, your product, what makes you different, you know, the information that you know that I can get from you. And then I take that and I jump off of there and start doing research. I look at your competitors. I look, get uh, your indirect competitors, which are people who have your audience, but not a similar product. And then I go in out and try to find your audience so I can pick up what they're saying, you know, what they're buying, you know, what makes them buy, what makes them want stuff. And that's where I start to structure the ideas that come in the next period, which is my brainstorm and copywriting. And that's where I start writing it all out and putting all that into all that research and all that work I did starts to become words that are going to do something. And you know, I run through those. This is usually a shorter, shorter area of the, you know, the work. The next phase is the, the first and the third phase are the longest, but the next phase is editing and revision. And this is where you go back, you polish it up, you make it pretty. Um, and this is the point where you start, you know, looking for sentences that just don't fit, um, sections that you read and you go, I don't even know why I wrote that there. Um, you know, and you, you kind of work backwards from what you've already done to get everything exactly as you want it. That's, that's great tips. So what if someone is, cause this is how I was at least, because I just didn't think that I was a linguistic at all. And like my words just didn't flow right. My grammar's not all that great. Uh, there's tons of tools out there nowadays, like with Grammarly and all these other tools online. But what if someone is just like, ah, just writing isn't my thing. Like I can't put structure together a sentence. Writing or English was my worst subject in school. How do you formulate or inspire someone that is that person that can't write feels like they can't write because everyone could write feels like they're not good at those words in order for it to come out this beautiful sentence structure and they just don't know where to start oh i know a lot of people can't write i see it a lot and i've got a lot of friends who go man i i, I can't write <laughs> at all and some of them you see it and you look at it and you go wow you really can't write <laughs> uh, but the thing is we can all talk and the you, everybody has a friend, everybody has a family member, somebody that they talk to. And one of the biggest, and this is, this is like an original tip from back in, you know, everybody's starting days in copywriting uh, and marketing in general is you're, nobody knows your product better than you. There's nobody in the world and it doesn't matter, you know, how many people you introduced to it, how many have used it, you have a view on it that nobody else does. So this, this plays for you and against you. So when you're writing to an audience, sometimes it does kind of play against you. You have a kind of an inside knowledge that nobody else does. And you, if you don't watch when you write, you end up writing inside of that knowledge and the people that read go, I, I don't understand what any of that means. Um, but it also gives you a unique perspective to be able to sell that better because you already know, you know, every question that's going to be asked for you, you have the answer, every objection that's going to come up, you have the response. So one of the things that I tell a lot of people who can't write is everybody's written a text or a letter, an email, something to a friend or a family member. 
what you do is you pick somebody that is similar to that audience, right? So let's say your audience is mechanics in Detroit that, you know, I don't know, they own their own shops. Well, you know, somebody who meets that idea of that ideal can you know, that ideal person, it may not be a, a mechanic shop they own, but you know, a mechanic, um, you just kind of write it. Like you started out like a letter to them and be like, dear John or whatever. And then you write from there the how you would tell them about, you know, this product and how you would sell it to them. And by the end of it, if you cut out the introduction and you cut out the, the sign off, you've got something similar to where you need to start with your copy. That's awesome. Do you recommend someone like maybe recording a video or a voice note of them, then transcribing that and that be their copy? Or is that something like a big no, no in the copy world? <laughs> That, that can work if you're doing it on your own. Um, one of the things though, that you have to watch out for anytime you transcribe, um, there are certain little bits of conversation that when you have them vocally, do not translate at all into text. And so if you're going to do that, you've got to read through and watch it, you know, format it, smooth it out some. Um, it's just, I all the, um, can't all really, the likes. yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, I, I was trying to think, we actually, it wasn't long ago, I had a conversation about this. We were talking about the idea of, you know, when you put a transcription on paper, um, I can't think of any, any sections that came to mind, but there was a few when we had that conversation, but <laughs> you'll yeah, find someone them. Someone actually told me, they're like, this is how I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do all these videos and then transcribe it. And I have a book. I was like, ah. Oh. You might want to rethink that a little bit, but whatever works for you. Do you have any tools or tips on where people could get started with writing? Is there any tools that you recommend that are so great that they need to take a look at right this second? Um, one of the biggest is Grammarly. Like Grammarly is literally, I mean, in all honesty, I swear sometimes it doesn't know what it's doing, but it's one of the greatest places to start if you're not really good with your grammar or sentence structure and all that. Um, you can get a free version of it. If you buy the premium, it actually has so many more features that I didn't even realize it had before I had it. It tells you plagiarism. It tells you sentence structure tips, stuff like that. Um, so if you can't write it all, premium might be the way you want to go. Um, trying to think of some other places oh uh, there was uh, uh there's there's a few places if you if you look around online that have uh kind of templates um and you don't have there's a lot of people that sell them you don't really have to pay for them you can find some templates uh where it's really kind of like ad libs the thing is if you use this in copy it's it ends up it's really poor quality uh it's been seen one million times maybe two million times if you're going to do that, the better thing to do is actually use similar swipe files where you go and you find some copy that works and you kind of save it and you just use it as a guideline. You know, so in this section, this guy's telling a story. So in this section, I must want to tell my story. In this section, he tells me how great this product is. So that's what I want to do here. Um, that's probably a better place to start than templates. And above, if you really, really can't get it down at all, and you're not ready to hire somebody. There are some wizards and stuff out there, but honestly, I think those are almost as bad as templates, if not worse. <laughs> and I, I I've literally half of my clients have come from funnel scripts and gone, can you fix this? <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> and that's where you come in. And that's why we all need a yep. copywriter. So let's talk a little bit more about templates because I see them everywhere. So how would someone, they think they're a copywriter, they're like, I just downloaded all these templates, all these swipes, now what do I do? <laughs> right. uh, the way I was always taught to do with swipes was to take, basically, if like, let's say you got a sales letter, you break down the sections you really like out of it and throw the rest away, and then you find another sales letter with the sections that you threw away that you really like and you start working them in. So you, you kind of make a Frankenstein sales letter. Um, that's usually the best way to do it. Otherwise, you end up with this horribly bland thing that everybody else has already sent out. Because the weird thing is, you got to think, um, and we'll use funnel scripts again as a, you know, kind of like a reference for this template idea. There are what I think uh, over, uh, there's got to be over 100,000 users on ClickFunnels now. Out of oh, 100,000 yeah. users, at least 10,000 have funnel scripts. So if there's 10,000 people sending out 
these exact scripts, what are your odds of getting one that hasn't been used and hasn't been Very seen? Very to none. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here, here's the weird thing. Um, you may not at first, and a lot of people may tell you this is, you know, completely, totally opposite, but the truth of it is when people read anything, you know, your posts, your copy, your emails, they get a sense of your sincerity and they just, they sense it. So if you're using a template, they may not, you know, look at it and go, I've seen this before, but they feel it and they go, wow, um, they're not really talking to me, which is one of the neatest things. Like with, uh, when you get, like when I write emails for people. Uh, one of the biggest focuses I make is that it's based off of them as people, who they are, how they talk and, um, you know, how they write, how they communicate, interact. And I use a lot of their personality and move it into all of their copy. And because of that, like when I send emails for people, they're the people they're reading them don't even realize that those weren't written that morning and just sent out. So it, you know, that that customness and the, the work and the polishing really pays off in the end for the relationship, which is what everybody wants end of the day. Yeah, for sure. So we definitely need to make that kind of emotion and it has to be coming from you because if Susie over here tells her story in the way that she speaks, like that's definitely not going to connect with the way that I speak. So we need to have Tr stay true to your authentic self, even in your writing and your speaking and making sure that it is actual your words and not someone Susie's over here or John's, whoever's, mm -hmm. that it is authentic to you, the way that you speak and the way that you flow your words and formulate your words. So you are a copy whiz. You do some of my things in like two minutes and I'm like, whoa, this would have taken me an hour. Do you have any tips for anyone on how to speed the copy process up or like a quick tip for them on how to go about writing something quickly well there's a few different ways people use and it's not to say that they're exactly right but if they keep you moving forward they're better than nothing um and that's to kind of you know a lot of times you'll pull from other stuff you've written look at other things that you've done you know even like let's say you, you told a friend about the product at some point in time that you created, you have, there has to be some conversation, some email, some something you've sent. And that's a really good place to look for, you know, stuff to pull out that meets your personality that tells about the product, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's a really good place to start for that. But other than that, um, again, it goes back to a lot of people using templates. The biggest thing is the fact that, uh, like the reason I'm so fast is because I've done it so many times and I can kind of look and go, yeah, this is what I want or this is what I want to do here. So that's awesome. And some great tips. Do you have any last minute tips and tricks for anyone looking to get started? Or if we have any copy enthusiasts or just any last minute tips and tricks for anyone listening and wanting to up their copy a little bit? Yeah, there's actually a lot of really cool resources that you can find online to learn from um a lot of a lot of stuff on youtube a lot of stuff you know that uh a lot of guides and stuff people give out uh one of the things that i've just started doing um which i'll give you a link to this that you can share if you'd like um like i said earlier i i built a story framework out and this thing the whole point of it was to do ads emails advertorials you know story leads pretty much whatever you wanted to use story-wise it would write the whole thing out you literally just answer six questions and at the end of it it tells you how to put it together into a story so it's a really good place to start you know if you're trying to do it yourself or trying to learn how to write stories better um other than that one of the weirdest things i've found is actually books for um like uh story writing guidelines for fiction books that's another weird place i've found to kind of get your story chops going so that's awesome I love the little bursts of inspiration coming from all over the place because I mean me I'm obviously non-fiction stuff however like I would never look to look at fiction books too for inspiration but that's a really great and a really great idea for anyone like looking to get into it so I would I personally would love to check out that link as well like those six questions in a way that formulates your story and again the stories could be coming from different perspectives so even if you do have just one story it could come have a different shed of light even 
answering these six questions, you're like, oh, that part fits into my story too. And you might get a, di a different perspective and a different point of view that, that you didn't realize that you've had before. So where can people find you? Well, I'm on uh, Facebook as Gregory Blake. Um, you can find me at my my actual portfolio site, which is gregbcopy.com um, on Instagram. And most recently, I'm actually probably more active here anyways, but at Clubhouse. I'm all over the place there, so. Is Clubhouse great for copywriters? I'm only on here and there, but <laughs> I'm sure uh, they have tons they, of marketing tips. They got for everybody and like everything you want, everything from crypto to, well, I think they actually had a dating chat room one night like i was scrolling through i'm like what the, seriously and it's it's everywhere um but no they have everything for mindset uh manifestation copywriting marketing uh marketers just running their mouths about dumb stuff and i elon musk was on there one night giving a talk on becoming a uh, entrepreneur so Hey, you might have some it's, golden nuggets from that. And that could be that burst of inspiration that we're looking for. Just go on a clubhouse, li listen to a chat and be like, that sentence resonated with me. And you can make a whole story about that. <laughs> Your story, how you got on clubhouse. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. Um, one of the, one of the neatest things on clubhouse, I've actually connected with a lot of uh, my favorite A-list copywriters and they're all starting to do rooms. There's like John Benson, um, Bond Halbert, Kevin Halbert, uh, Ian Stanley, like the list of them just goes on and everybody is on Clubhouse and does something here and there. So it's definitely worth checking out. That's awesome. All right, Greg, thank you so much. And everyone looking to get some copy written, contact Greg, uh, contact Greg. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of your knowledge. I think everyone's going to walk away with some golden nuggets in that and really be able to uplift their copy, spaz it up and make this this beautiful linguistic thing that you didn't even realize that you've written. You read it over and you're like, wow, this was awesome. All thanks to Greg. <laughs> Hey, no Thank problem. You. Thank, Thank you for you. having Thank me you. on. <laughs> for more tips and tricks on business and spirituality, join us inside the Spirituality for Badass Babes Facebook group.